this morning. <clears throat> As we continue, something I've been thinking about for the, the calling us higher was how we look at the scriptures. Early on, I was blessed by being able to uh, see how you, when you read, reading the scripture is important. Knowing how to read and study the scriptures is, is very important. And having somebody be able to expound on what the scripture says the right way is extremely important. And now this is, for some of you brethren, you already know this, what I'm going to say, but for some of you younger ones, I was in my early 20s before somebody, that's when I came to know the Lord, but somebody explain to me the importance of the focus of the scripture. And I'll, I'll use a, a scripture that's well known to, to bring my point here. But focus is very important. And we see that because remember how Satan, he shifted from the, from the very beginning the focus off of God onto man. And how drastically that changed everything. And the, the way the focus was on God and then they put the focus on men, that made such a difference that we are still dealing with it today. And Christ had to die for that shift because the focus went off of God and onto man. And this caused sin. I want, I want to read a, I use a scripture that's well known that uh, many people use and it really affects the way people see what God is doing. John 3, I'm going to go John 3, 15 through 18. It's a very well known scripture. Many people quote John 3, 16. What, that whosoever believeth, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So the focus here is God and his what he's doing through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, Many I've talked to, you will believe the focus was on the world and how God just so loved the world. But you see here the difference in focus. It is not on the world. And I'm going to bring this out. It's on God and what he is doing through his son. And how we pertain to this is how we look at his son. And where our focus is, is it on God or on this world? Because if your focus is not on God, that changes everything. So the point is not the world. It is what the Father is doing with the Son. Sent his Son into the world to... Not, see, the world was not the point. It was what God was doing with his Son. The focus is on God and the people that he has chosen. That is what's what God is doing through the people he has chosen, not the condemned. John 3.18 says, I know whom I have chosen. I have chosen. See, that God doesn't ask us to go figure out who has been chosen, but he knows who he has chosen. Again, the focus is on God, what he is doing. 
So the point is not the world. It's God being glorified. That's the point. It's not the world. John th uh, 13, 31 says, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. So again, we're seeing where the focus is. Where God's putting the focus. Now men may shift the focus. Now I, I'd even go, not just men, it's what the, Satan has been doing from the beginning. Shifting the focus from God to man. See, we see how, what Christ, his focus is on what God is doing. Jesus continues to point to where this is leading. The focus is not on the world, but John uh, 13, 36, Whether I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou, thou shalt follow me afterwards. So again, the world is not just focus. It's where it's leading to. I remember uh, just recently I saw a bumper sticker in the back of somebody's car. It said, it's not the destination that's important. It's the journey. And the, Thursday, I, uh, actually it was Friday because we got shifted. But anyway, I just saw this bumper sticker on the back of somebody's car. And I thought, see, this is a master stroke of the devil to get people to think it's the journey. That's the most important thing. This world is the most important thing when it's not. It's what God is doing and where he's bringing us. That is the most important thing. The destination is the most important thing. Because if you don't get to glory, who cares what you did? It's getting there, being with God, being with God, knowing God. That's the point. John 17, 9 says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. Thou hast given me. Again, focus. God, Christ, for they are thine. God is the point. Now again, here is not what Jesus is focused on. Here and now is not what Jesus is focused on. It's where we're going in God. Bringing us to God that he may be glorified. John 17, 11 says, Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Now see, this, this hasn't, you know, we're not complete yet. It's when we get there to be with him. That is what the point is. So here and now is not the focus. That they, not the world, may be as we are. See, he doesn't say that the world be as we are, but they, who's they? It's that whosoever believeth. They and we are the point. The chosen of God is who Jesus is talking about. That God may be glorified. So for us to focus on the world. When Jesus did not. But he focused on what God was doing. And those who believed in him. That's, what, that's where the focus was. Now that makes it absurd. For people to put the focus on the world. I mean come on. You got to read past just the one verse. You got to put it all together. To see what God is doing. We are looking what God has done. And is doing now. And will be doing for eternity. See you got to you gotta keep on going with this. You can't just get so far and stop. You got to keep on going. See what God is doing. We are heirs. The, not, I mean the, it's, this world is not. Come on. If you want to be honest. Are you, can you, do you really see yourself as being an heir like we're talking about here in the scripture? It's not yet fulfilled exactly what we're going to be. You can't look around and say, yes, we have it all right now. Because if you're honest, you see that many believers are struggling. Many believers have hard times. Many believers uh, are not rich. Not the way the scripture is talking about. Joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I mean, this is an eternal kingdom. 
doesn't seem to, to look that way and just to be able to look around, can you point people out walking down the street and go, that is a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Now, when you go talk to them, you, this will be revealed. But just to look at them, you cannot see that. So the world is not the point. We have an inheritance in the world to come. We do not want to come short of what God has for his people. Remember Esau, he sold his birthright because he was short-sighted. He, he was thinking about the time right then and there. See, what God's showing us here is this, he's preparing us for a time that's going to be eternal. We don't want to be short-sighted here, brother, when we look at this. This is the mercy of God that we have been made many heirs of work that he is doing. It has been set up by God that only as we stayed focused on his son will we have a chance to, to inherit. Which again, here we see the focus that God has made has been on him and his son. So if the focus is ever anywhere else, that's the wrong focus. And it will not lead you to glory. You'll come up short, just like Esau. Not all the Israelites came out of Egypt to inherit the promised land. Only them that believed in God. Revelation 21.7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. So we don't have all things right now. But shall inherit all all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. It's God that is the point. Amen. This is done by faith. We are to keep by the power of God through faith, 1 Peter 1.5. The world cannot offer us what we need. It is only through Jesus. God shall supply all your need, Philippians 4.19. The Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in Him and Him only. Amen. So we cannot put our focus on two things. It cannot be on eternity and being with God and on this world here and now. We've got to let go one or the other. Are you going to let go of the world, or are you going to let go of God? You have to make the determination now. We are told to set our minds and affections on things above, not on the things of this earth, Colossians 3, 2. This is where it will all get started up ahead. That's the way we're, by faith we can see that we're looking. The starting point is there. Not here. Here we're preparing for there. Everything is geared towards there where God is going to be glorified and we're going to be with him. We're going to be his people. We are told to lay a hold on eternal life, 1 Timothy 6, 12 through 19. Eternal life, what is eternal life? It's knowing God, John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. God has always been the focus, and he always will be the focus. So as we continue on this morning, brethren, we throw off anything that ties us to this world that's passing away and lay a hold of those things which are eternal and put our focus on those things. Amen. Let us pray as we continue on. Sister Debbie's going to lead us in singing. Dear Heavenly Father, I am thankful that